Good afternoon, YouTube, and welcome to the Piper Report. So before I begin the video, I just want to say that I'm in the process of moving. I've got some things to take care of my personal life, so the videos within the, coming in the next two to three weeks might be sporadic. They might not happen as often as I, as I would like, and especially for video monologues. I really want to start increasing the intake of video monologues, but the next two to three weeks... I would not be doing many of those because those take time to edit and things of that nature. So I'm going to be pretty busy just giving you a heads up. Now, here is an article that just, it's irritating. The Senate Intelligence Committee has just passed a bill out of committee that would declare WikiLeaks and Julian Assange a hostile spy service. Now, first, before we go over the article, we have to understand exactly what does passing a bill out of committee mean? Well, Basically, the Senate and Congress are composed of a variety of committees. And before a bill can actually be voted on on the floor session, first the bill has to have a sponsor and a co-sponsor. So if the bill gets sponsored by enough people in the legislature, then they choose a committee hearing or a committee group that is closest to what the legislation is about. So usually somebody, uh, a public person, would have an idea for a bill he or she would take it to their congressman or their senator. Their senator then would draft up the bill. They would find sponsors, their colleagues, to sign off on it. Then it would go to committee. In the committee, they discuss it. They bring in the witnesses, either for or against it. And at the very end, they vote on the bill. And what the vote means is that if the vote passes in committee, then the vote can go to the rules committee where they can set up how to debate it on the floor. So the if the the hearing actually passes the bill, then it will go to the floor eventually. But the chairman of the committee can actually sit on the bill as well and not get it heard, which is what a lot of people do actually in Congress. So if a bill gets pushed and maybe the chairman doesn't want it to go to the floor, he or she could, in theory, just sit on it as long as they want, which is why state legislators legislatures are actually more efficient than national ones because most states, you're not allowed to do that actually. Usually, the bill goes right to the assembly right away and gets voted on. But So anyways, a bill was brought forth, and it is to declare WikiLeaks a spy service. And it's like, are you kidding me? Like, are you seriously kidding me right now? I mean, how many times have I said that WikiLeaks is not an uh, intelligence service? WikiLeaks is not a hostile state actor. It is a news organization, probably the only honest news organization left. They post... Topics that are quite controversy, but they themselves aren't receiving that information in illicit means. It's not like they're the ones doing the hacking. They get the information from others, and they post it. It's possible that those who give WikiLeaks information, they may be breaking the law. But WikiLeaks itself isn't, just like how uh, The Guardian posted the Snowden leaks. Does that mean that The Guardian should be declared a terrorist organization or a hostile spy service because they posted classified information that was given to them by an ex-CIA uh, employee? No, they shouldn't. And the same concept can be said for WikiLeaks. So it does irritate me when like someone like Mike, Mike Pompeo, who is the CIA director, is trying to get this perception about WikiLeaks that they are synonymous with Russia intelligence or these nefarious intelligence services overseas that are trying to harm the U.S. WikiLeaks will post information about any country or any person. It doesn't matter. The only thing that matters is where they get the information from. So if someone's in Russia and he hates the Russian government and maybe they have access to intelligence documents in Russia and they want to expose Russia then they will give WikiLeaks that information because they know WikiLeaks will publish it. WikiLeaks has published articles about every country almost. It's not just they're doing it against the U.S. They're not just doing it against um, the Democrats, like a lot, like uh, the belief is. They, they have posted and they have exposed many countries and many political ideologies. Here's the article. If the Senate Intelligence Committee gets its way, America's spy agencies will have to release a flood of information about Russian threats to the U.S., the kind of threats that Donald Trump may not want made public. 
The committee also wants Congress to declare WikiLeaks a non-state hostile intelligence service, which would open Julian Assange and pro-transparency organization, which most of the U.S. government considers a handmaiden of Russian intelligence, to new levels of surveillance. Now, this is greatly exaggerated. But what's interesting to note, back to, that, I guess, the hearing process, is that what could actually happen is, in the bill, when it's discussed in um, the committee, they could actually only do like one sentence on the way we bomb the bill saying, and this would also declare WikiLeaks a hostile service. And then when it goes to the rules committee, they can essentially rewrite the whole bill. And so they can actually increase the amount of restrictions or increase the type of legislation if passed will happen. So say this, sent this only had like one sentence, declare WikiLeaks hostile service, and then it goes to the rules committee. The Rules Committee could rewrite the bill saying, declare WikiLeaks a hostile service, and also Julian Assange an enemy of the state, and also, you know, etc., etc. So this is a dangerous precedent to have. This is a dangerous first step to have. If WikiLeaks gets dismantled, and if Julian Assange gets arrested, we are losing the one true media organization that has integrity. The actual investigative journalists that are still out there. WikiLeaks. The committee also wants Congress to declare WikiLeaks a non-state hostile... I already read that, didn't I? On Friday, the committee quietly publishes, published its annual intelligence authorization, a bill that blesses the next year's worth of intelligence operations. The bill passed the committee late last month on a 14-1 vote, with Democrat Ron White of Oregon as a lone dissenter, owing to what he calls the legal, constitutional, and policy implications that WikiLeaks provision may entail. Yes. Indeed. Yes. I still kind of find it interesting how they don't, they want to basically arrest Julian Assange. Julian Assange is not an American citizen. Julian Assange is not guilty of any crimes in America. But CIA Director Mike Pompeo, he is desperate. He is desperate to arrest Assange because Assange has published information regarding the illegal activities of the CIA like WikiLeaks Vault 7 and Operation Dumbo and things of that nature. They are exposing these tactics the CIA has that can completely violate the civil liberties of the American people. Assange, whether you like him or not, he actually is a hero. And whether you like WikiLeaks or not, they are a much-needed media organization to actually disseminate truth. The truth I'm referring to is the type of intelligence services and tactics that major governments have, that major governments use. It is important that we have an uh, organization like WikiLeaks. So we know what is happening to us. We know if our civil rights and liberties are being expunged, are being um, violated. Among the bill's major provisions are requirements for the Intelligence Committee to release major public reports into Russian threats to U.S. elections, Russian interference in the 2016 campaign, Moscow's influence operations, Russian money laundering in the U.S., and more. In short, the Senate Committee intends to do a lot more about Russia than investigate its involvement in 2016 presidential race. Namely, box the Trump administration into a more assertive response to Russian ag aggression. And this all comes back to creating a new Cold War with Russia. I'm assuming that this type of bill is being heavily pushed and will be heavily pushed by the neocons in Congress. I can see someone like John McCain discussing this for like an hour, for a day, and completely agreeing with everything it says and how we have to stop Russian aggression because they are destroying America, even though America outspends Russia on our military 10 to 1. So those who think Russia is actually a threat to the sovereign nation of America are just wrong. <laughs> They're just wrong. And I don't blame them. I mean, with all the rhetoric and propaganda you hear on the media, you can actually assume or you, you can actually um, reinforce the notion that Russia is a great enemy to us. Their propaganda gives, cre gives credence to that fact that Russia is very dangerous to the interests of America. Which is completely wrong here. Um, I'll post a link in the description. I won't go over all of it, but that's kind of what I want to say about this. This, this is how it starts. This is how it starts. And if this bill, in theory, gets passed 
in the Senate and it goes to the House and it gets passed in the House, Trump better hope he vetoes it because if he doesn't, he will have no support at all anymore. If he ve- if he signs into law, then the neocons would have truly won, which it's already kind of hinted that the neocons are winning based on Donald Trump ad- adopting their foreign policy, which is the same foreign policy that Obama had, which is the same one that Bush had, which is the same one that Clinton had, et cetera, et cetera. So, but if this happens and Donald Trump acquiesces to the demands, if you will, of the neocons and neolibs in Congress who want to dictate a particular foreign policy, and then Trump's presidency is forever doomed and his support, his support will forever be gone. If it happens, if the bill does reach his office, then Donald Trump, you must veto it. Do not let this atrocity, this egregious type of legislation actually happen. Because it won't actually lead to anything good. And it takes away the one organization that actually cares about integrity and truth. The one organization that is willing to disseminate any type of material, regardless who it offends, regardless who it exposes, it is essential that we have a WikiLeaks. They are a necessary evil if you are against them. They are still necessary. But most people don't see them that way. Most people view them as a necessity not a necessary evil. We need WikiLeaks. We have to have a WikiLeaks in this world. And I'm done.